What's going on, everyone? And welcome to Movie Emporium's TV review of the Never Season 1, Episode 2, titled Exposure. Now, before we begin, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button and join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button, as well as commenting below on any video that you watch, including this one. Okay, um... I, uh, yeah, so The Nevers has now officially released the second episode, and, um, I don't know if this series is for me. I'm gonna be fairly honest. I, uh, I'm trying. I really am. I know that sounds stupid. It's a TV show. You, how hard do you need to try to watch something? Well, there's a thing called, uh, not really liking something. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Now, to be fairly honest, it's a fine show. It has people that are fine. The actors are trying to do an interesting show. But when it comes to metahumans, when it comes to people with abilities, when it comes to, you know, Victorian London and having steampunk and having, you know, individuals that have, you know, cool aesthetics and stuff like that, this show just doesn't have any appeal. It doesn't have its own identity, I guess you could say. It feels like it's borrowing from so many other places. And I, I don't know. I just, after two episodes, you think you would be able to just be on the show, be excited for watching it. And I just, I don't find anything exciting at all. I don't find this world exciting. I don't find the characters exciting. To be fairly honest, after two episodes, I'm completely bored and don't even want to watch the next two episodes, which I have screeners for. And uh, to be fairly honest, I'm doing a week-by-week -week thing anyway, so I can wait a week to watch it. But, you know, you leave off with the idea of this spaceship of some sorts, and it's flying through the air. And it's like a Wonderland slash Neverland type ship, which, you know, when it's called the Nevers, I, I told my friend, I'm like, this sounds a lot like it's coming from, like, uh, Peter Pan wonderland or neverland and i'm probably wrong in that because of the magical abilities and stuff like that but it was making me kind of wonder if this is a, a kind of a, a kind of its own homage to uh peter pan and you know captain hook and stuff like that and i'm like i said i'm totally probably totally wrong on that so you know take that for a grain of salt but this episode starts out with this young woman who has the ability when she touches things she is able to make them flow which automatically makes her an outcast because the touched which are the metahumans in this show are basically looked down upon they're frowned upon as we've seen in the last episode and she goes on the run she's being chased after everyone she is trying to find out where the the refuge place where the touched are at the orphanage and she ends up getting captured this is near the end of the episode but she ends up getting captured by that evil sadistic doctor and so we have you know the olivia williams character who is in a wheelchair and she you know seems like a good person she seems like she's looking out for the touch but we realize that the doctor who does a lobotomy on that poor young woman she ends up being like a slave to this you know underground group of individuals who are being used to like take coal away and stuff like that and we find out olivia williams character is basically an evil person with the doctor and they found this object of some sort which i have no idea what it is and apparently they want to keep it a secret which is how these shows work and you know it's it show, it's already shown its hand i mean i know it's only six episodes but it's already shown its hand on being totally unoriginal and not very unique and it doesn't matter if it's set in victorian london or it has many humans it's just you already have doing what other shows that i've already seen this year like the irregulars are doing and that's a problem to me fairly honest it's just and that to me personally is the best part of the episode outside of the you know true and melody stuff that comes out later in the episode but yeah yeah i know i know you're like oh god here he's reviewing another episode but when when you go into a series that has a lot of potential at least from the trailers and this is the second episode and it's still not giving you much of anything yeah, that's a problem it really is and the biggest problem with this episode though is the kind of uh, nature of what metahumans or the touched are which are a freak show a group of individuals which i'm not saying that they're freaks but that's how this victorian london s society looks upon them you know they're scared of them it's like the original x-men movie that you know came out in 2000 people are scared of these people because they don't know them they think they're you know uh, a group of like uh, leopards, I guess you could say, where they're, if you touch them, you're going to get the disease from them, stuff like that. And the reason I say that is because we have this party that's being thrown, and Penance and uh, True are invited to the party, and they want to have them bring some of their, you know, people of their touch, the touched individuals. 
and they're bringing them and they're going to be shown off to the people at the party which automatically thinks me uh, automatically makes me think of like sideshow freaks and stuff like that and so they're taken to the party we take the you know the really tall young girl and we take primrose and we take a couple other people as well as uh you know penance and stuff like that and they they're forced to put like purple ribbons on them to identify who they are and it plays like that through the entire episode where they're eventually told to go home and stuff like that and they're freaking out the guests and so on and so forth and it's absolute insanely garbage like i said it's just i understand what joss whedon is doing i understand what the group's doing but it just it feels so haphazardly and hackneyed and illogical and boring and you know these girls young girls that are being put through all this stuff it just it feels like they're just being put through as a, a fun joke for the episode and they're trying then the the creators are trying to instill some kind of interesting ideas and concepts and it just doesn't work i don't i feel like the the young i feel like the young girls are just they're not given much to do they're just there as props for the show itself and it just doesn't work so it's really such a shame but you know it is what it is and it just it's the worst part of the episode it doesn't work for me at all and so on and so forth but and then we have like hugo swan and you know augie and stuff like that hugo swan basically after the incident with uh, melody and the chain gun guy and you know mary who's the one with the singing voice after she's captured um he is using his opportunistic abilities to create a new social club and he uses that at the aristocratical society group who are a bunch of racist individuals and so on and so forth. And, and I don't particularly care for Hugo Swan, you know, James Dorn's character. I just don't think it's a very fun, entertaining character. He ends up building, like, the sex brothel, which looks very much like Eyes Wide Shut. And he takes Augie down there. And because he's a pan-bisexual or whatever he is, he... You know, he allows Augie to have, you know, I don't know, whatever. It's this. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It's like you have these characters and they're just stereotype tropes and they're not very interesting. And, you know, you look at the stuff like with uh, Melody and Mary and their discussion. And, you know, that's, you know, it's an entertaining stuff. The Melody stuff in this episode is a lot better than the last episode. Just in the simple fact that it really feels like there's a little bit of life there. But it, once again, they're using Mary as a, a tool, as an object. They're not really doing much with with her and they're trying to get some information out of her about her abilities and stuff like that and i don't, I don't know the, the one part that i thought was kind of fun was they do like um uh he's uh david david's the uh, key for some of the character in lost lost boys with jason patrick and stuff like that and they they give mary this chicken piece of chicken or whatever and they say you know it's the last leftover piece of chicken uh, mary's getting ready to eat it and it turns out to be a, a dead rat, which is very, you know, reminiscent of, like, what David did with Jason Patrick's character with the whole worms and stuff like that. And I thought that was clever. I thought the woman who cut off her toes and stuff like that is disgusting, but it was like, you know, that's fun. And, you know, Melody's, you know, the, the woman who's playing Melody is entertaining and stuff like that. So I got to give that a little bit of credit. And then it leads into, like, the other section of this episode where we have Frank Mundy and, of course, True, and they're having, they're kind of, uh, uh, detective quest situation where they're trying to find mary and you know the house that the the uh touch live in is being kind of uh ransacked from the police so that warrants and stuff like that and in essence the uh, it, it goes down to a detective mystery it goes down to because of the abilities that true has she's able to find the kind of lair which is very steampunkish in its own right and she goes down there she sees melody she says you know give this to frank mundy to the woman that she has been talking through the episode to come find her and stuff like that and it leads into this kind of confrontation where there's kind of a kick-ass battle kick-ass fight sequence between melody and true which i thought was pretty cool you know joss Whedon's always been good about having women kick ass and do it pretty popularly but then we also learned that melody and true have a back history together where they were once friends and you know Mel or true did something that you know basically betrayed uh, melody and stuff like that that's why melody is the way she is and then melody does a whole saw you know the whole saw horror series type trap where she has of course penance in one corner tied with a noose around her neck and she has mary on the other side in the, the rafters tied with a noose around her neck and she gives the option you can kill mary you can kill penance Either one, whoever you kill, the other one will be saved. You kill me, which is Mel Melody. Nobody will be saved. You have a choice. So what does True do? She shoots herself, makes 
Uh, of course, Melody mad. Melody goes over and tries to figure out what happened. True shoots Melody, and that's when the police show up, and both Mary and Penance are saved. And Melody escapes like she did the last time, and that's the end of that portion of the episode. Mary and Mundy, who have a relationship together, you know, they have some kind of history together as well. They kind of have their, you know... Um, their moment together in the sun and that's the end of the episode that leads into whatever's gonna happen next there's no nick frost in this episode and um overall i just didn't thought the episode was fine that's like a real quick real fast pace you know review of the episode but you know the episode just in general and i'm not i'm not gonna keep this review very long but this episode in general is just it feels so haphazard it feels so hackneyed it feels just so bland and boring it feels like there's no life to any of these characters. There's no there's no pizzazz. There's no oomph to any of the story. And like I said, when the biggest part of your story is just a Saul-style moment, or when your biggest part of your series is, or episode is, you have characters that are being shown as freaks and kind of, you know, these people that don't nobody cares about. I've seen it before, and I've seen it done better, and that's your biggest problem. And it just it's boring and not very exciting and just... Makes me not want to care about the series at all. I hope the third episode is much, much better, but I don't have much hope right now. You know, two episodes in of a six-episode six season, and you're still not giving me much of anything. I have a problem. And the movie, the show is really ugly to look at, and, you know, the character, like I said, the characters are just bland and boring, and the most fun character, like I said, is Melody, but even her is just, yeah, whatever. I'm just not, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I'll, I'll finish the season. I'll do my reviews. But as of right now, I'm just not on board. So it is what it is. But um, this episode is probably a little worse than the last episode. So 6.5 out of 10. Very, very mediocre. Uh, I think I gave the last episode 7.5 out of 10 or something like that. So uh, not looking good. I hope the episode the next episode is not like a 5 out of half out of 10. The last episode of the season is like a 1. That'd be really bad. But but yeah, that'll do it. That'll be my take on The Nevers Season 1, Episode 2, which is titled Exposure. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of the episode. I know people do like this season. I know that people do like the show. Definitely understand if you like it. But tell me what you like or don't like about the episode itself. Otherwise, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button. And as always, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace out.